I'll give you two answers on that as far as how well it's being received and all that fun stuff. Uh, it's based on server 2008 R2. That's been out for about a year, close to a year and a half. I think it was October of 2009. Um, and Exchange 2010 has also been out for about a year or so. So the core technologies are, are pretty solid, relatively speaking. It's really the consolidation in terms of some of the tools, uh, you know, some of the management tools and the like that are happening. That's going to be part of the issue. So far, it's done very well as far as the technology goes from what I've heard. The challenge has been the positioning. Because what ends up happening is you end up with how do I want to say this? Why do I need this? Why do I need to upgrade? And, and you get that from the business owner who's going to sit there and they're saying their 2003 environment or the 2008 environment are working absolutely fine. And unfortunately, I'm not connecting. Um, they are working absolutely fine. So why do I have to do this upgrade? And in a lot of cases, the meat and potatoes, I just get my email, I just do my files, I just do those things. There really isn't a heck of a lot different here. I mean, truly. So it's either the company who's looking at their hardware and saying, boy, that's getting long in the tooth, or it's the company that is saying, we want to migrate to the cloud. So we've got, we've done about 10 or 11 migrations to, from whatever their current email structure was to the BPOS, including most of them, about two thirds of them have been exchange migrations. And you take a small business server that's performing very slowly, not uncommon, and you take out the exchange components, that puppy's gonna start performing a lot better. So similarly, if you take a look at some of these things and you take a look at a small business server essentials option, the performance for that server is gonna be a lot better if they have those components removed and if they don't need those other components. So I, I guess, and here's where, here's where I always lose my Microsoft points. Microsoft is really struggling to find its position in the SMB market. And you can see that by looking at, at what's going on. And I don't mean this is necessarily a bad way because they're really making a lot of solutions available that, that really make it pretty cool for a small, medium business to, to do things. But you see the whole BPOS, and then there's Office 365, there is Office web applications, there's the SkyDrive, is that their, SkyDrive, which is their hosted you know, uh, personal storage. Uh, then you look at the SMB market, Microsoft's SBSC, uh, Small Business uh, Specialist, or Small Business Certification, all of that kind of thing. They're kind of throwing things in here to try to figure out exactly what small, medium companies want. And I think that the acceptance and the visibility of this product are suffering a bit because of that. Usually when you saw Microsoft would release an SBS, there'd be launches, there'd be all sorts of events, all that kind of thing. And there actually is a launch event tomorrow that's over at Microsoft. Is that a partner only or is that a open? Is it a partner only? You guys can't come, okay? You especially. <laughs> no. Uh, there you go, there you go. And uh, is Matt, Matt's not doing the presentation tomorrow, is he? Is? Okay. How do you think I know? Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so, so that's to me, that's one of the issues that's going on right now. When they did the SBS 2003 especially, that was when Microsoft was in their glory as far as the positioning of the product. So there was a lot more visible stuff and a lot more hoopla and all that kind of silliness. Uh, the Microsoft partners that I chat with on occasion and all that really had trouble with their clients justifying the upgrade to 2008. The 2003 to 2011 is much easier because you're talking about hardware that's, you know, getting, getting up there in years, usually. Uh, the 2008 to 2011, that one's going to be interesting to see how, how many clients go with that. Um, we're running into more and more situations where we've got SBS servers where we're taking out the exchange. So we're seeing that as well. Um, more hardware is better. Duh. 
paying less money is better. Duh. You have that, you have that challenge between the two. You need to have, when, you, when it comes time to pricing hardware, you need to have an idea of approximately what's going to happen to the box in terms of how busy and all that fun stuff is. And it can be as simple as a question of how many users you're going to have, or as we were talking about here, are they all going to be doing real resource intensive things, so on and so forth. I'll give you two answers. The first answer is going to be if you buy it yourself, and the second is if you, if you go through an IT consultant which is a much better way to do it, by the way. Well, you know. If you do it yourself, then one of the things you should do is you should be buying from somebody, and Dell and HP both do this, is that there is some resource for you to assist you in sizing it. Even if it's a chat, online chat. They all have online chats, they all have whatever, so you should be able to answer the question of what, are they, what do we want people to do? Well, we want people to do, and oh, gee, what does that mean? I want people to be able to use all their office stuff. Okay, just general file and print and all that. I've also got a couple applications that I'm going to install. Well, what are those applications? And if they're mainstream applications, then hopefully the vendor will have some understanding. Or they may ask you a couple of questions, in which case you may have those couple of questions and have to go back to who you bought the software from. Um, you know, if you're... So what if we're wrong? You know, because what's going to end up happening is they're going to tell you how many CPUs are in the box, so how many brains are actually thinking at any one particular point in time, and how fast are they thinking. Then how much RAM? RAM is electronic, so you've got these electrons that are going back and forth very, very fast, all that kind of fun stuff. And that's basically what is used while the computer's on. That's how much you can think about at any point in time. And then you've got how much on the hard drive? How much space can we actually store? The, the analogies I use for that are the CPUs, if you think about it as uh, we have people working in a library, the table is memory, however much we can scatter on the table is how much we can be working on at any one point in time. How many people are sitting here making changes? That's our CPUs and however fast or lazy they are. And then here is all the disk space. If I'm done making changes to this file, somebody has to get up, put this back in the bookcase, and then pick up the next thing. And if I run out of space here, I can't work on anything else. Maybe I can swap. I'll, I'll put this book over here temporarily, because when I get up, I slow down. I'll go over here and work on this for a while, and then I'll go temporarily. And it's one of those where if I either don't have enough people working on stuff, I don't have a big enough table, or I don't have enough space in my bookshelves. I don't have enough CPUs, I don't have enough memory, I don't have enough disk space. Every one of those has a speed associated with it. How fast is the CPU? How fast is the memory? How fast are the hard drives? Every one of those has a certain efficiency. You know, are, are we fragmented? Are we using memory? Are we caching? You know, we can get each one to really, really complicated levels, but it really comes down to those three things. Okay? And then, you, and, and you can go deeper and deeper. You know, we could talk about, okay, for the hard drives, do we have multiple hard drives in what's called a RAID configuration? So if one hard drive fails, the other ones can keep going. On the power supply, do I have multiple power supplies, so on and so forth. Drive both. The business needs drive the usage needs, which then drives a combination of the hardware and the software needs. Okay? And that's, it, that, that's actually a good point as far as what drives what. The bottom line is, if you can't get your business needs done, the rest of it is moot. The rest of it makes no part whatsoever. And this is especially to, to those geeks of you here, this is how you keep getting outsourced, or keep from getting outsourced, is you know that definition. If you can talk about what the business specifics are, what the business needs are, that's something that some guy on the phone that they just happened to talk to is not going to be able to do. So you find that out. Then based on what the business needs are, that's going to tell you what your users are going to need to be able to do in order to make that business need happen. Now that you know what the users are going to be able to do, it's a combination of hardware and software. Now the software, relatively speaking, you, you have a limited number of options. 
you can configure it a bazillion different ways, but you've either got small business server essentials, small business server standard, small business server with premium add-on pack, Windows standard server, or a cloud-based solution. It's really one of those. And each one of them has a certain area of operation where it works really nicely as long as you're not looking to do this or do that. And then the hardware needs to support that. Okay? So I guess we're kind of going that order. Business, user, software, hardware. So as I understand your question, you've got kind of a patchwork solution. Yeah, we've got faxes coming in from a service we buy, you know, that comes into our inbox and the emails and cool. all that. So we got all these different solutions that are probably doing all this stuff, or at least most of it, mm -hmm. um, but in a different way and in a very in the unintegrated way. It's all just this, that, and the other cool. together. Okay, cool. So why, why should you change? Really is the question to a certain degree coming to. Okay. I come here and I go, wow, this is really cool. Yep. Here's, here's the, the couple, of, couple of answers I'm going to give you. First of all is centralized management. Excuse me, let me back up a second. The answer to the question, are you secure, cannot be answered by you right now. Because it would be dependent upon every link in that chain and every instance of that of every link in that chain. So if, let's say, you've got, uh, about how many workstations are there total? I'm sorry. Say 10, 10 or 12. Let's say 10. So of those 10 workstations, you know, there's that one guy. That's probably that coppage idiot. <clears throat> Never updates his antivirus. He's going to who knows what porn sites. Uh, he's doing whatever. So. He's at risk, okay? <laughs> and you don't know that. There's no, because you have no management capability or monitoring capability of that device. So if everybody says, oh yeah, sure, I'm keeping everything up to date. I'm patching, I'm updating, I'm doing all that. Not a problem, I'm backing up. You honestly, there's no, there's no good consolidated way of, of knowing that. Similarly, if anyone, now the rest of the, so that's that one guy. Now we have the second user who has uh, problems. Now all of a sudden the faxes aren't coming across or that person can't access the files. In order to understand that person's dilemma, you have to understand how that person's doing it. Well, that person's doing it different than everybody else. So now every time there's a problem, you have to rediscover everything. Well, that's okay because the third person actually set it up. Oh, you didn't hear, the third person just left. It's no longer with the company. So whatever, the, however they set it up, we don't understand. We don't know how it was done. Well, that's okay because we just hired a new person. Who can set them up? Well, that depends because nobody actually knows how any of this is set up. So it's one of those things where as you start talking about the exceptions and how the exceptions are handled, whether it be exceptions in configuration, exceptions in access, exceptions in setting up, if somebody's computer got, got fried, how, how hard would it be to replace it? And how quick could we do it? You know, so, because the problem is whenever, you, whenever we go to a it works environment, at that point in time, they're almost always not thinking about when it doesn't or what would happen if. This gives you a very, if it's implemented properly, a very focused, oh, okay, another computer, yeah, we'll just add it to this thing and they'll have the same access as everybody else. You know, because they, we, through the server, we set up who has access to what files to what folders. So we just, and we set up a group and we called the group, you know, uh, receivables or whatever, or, or customer development. So whenever we, a new person comes on, we just make them a member of that group, they've immediately got access to the same files and folders as everybody else. And the nice thing is, is that this is best practice. So even if we fall under the bus, Somebody else could come in and go, oh, they set it up that way. That's, you know, that, that makes sense. So it's, it's one of how, do you ha how are you going to handle exceptions? How are you going to convey a, a true sense of here's where we are from a security standpoint? And by security, I don't just mean people hacking in or whatever. I also mean if you lose a, an asset, are you actually going to lose data? How are you sure everybody's patching and updating and all that fun stuff? That's where really your kind of situations, I don't want to say they fall apart, because if you want to ignore those, 
life's good. And it's just when it isn't good that it happens. At some point or another, organizations have to make a transition from the, we've got n number of solutions scattered all over the place to a consolidated one. It's just a question of how and when. And the problem is, is that in a lot of cases, it's the way you did things that got you in this position. And I mean this in a good way. Because if you would have tried to put something like this in place four years ago, it never would have worked. Because the organization was too small, it was too new, we didn't know, you know, whatever. So you get to that point, and now it's like, okay, now that's working against us. So does that help 